Hey guys, DJ here at Top Deck Cards and Games uh, with my first deck profile video for the September 2016 format. Uh, I'm going to talk about Uranus Monarchs today, so let's get into that. Uh, Uranus Monarchs is a deck that basically aims to summon the sky, uh, and then what uh, Uranus does, if you're not familiar with it, is your opponent either selects continuous trap or continuous spell when you summon it. Um, then you get to set a card of that type from your deck, and you go from there. So if your opponent selects spell, uh, that's what they probably should do. You get March of the Monarchs. Uh, Uranus gets plus 300 attack for all of your face-up spell and trap cards. So now we have a 3200 monster that cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Uh, Uranus also protects this card from being destroyed, so this card cannot be destroyed by card effects. Um, it can also not be targeted or just destroyed. Just destroyed. But uh, it makes so our face-up spell and trap cards cannot be destroyed. So now we have a 3200 monster that can't be destroyed by card effects or targeted. And we have March of the Monarchs that cannot be destroyed. Uh, add on to that, if we were to have a domain in play, because we're not going to use an extra deck, uh, our opponent can now no longer use their extra deck in an attempt to get over our Uranus. Uh, if they were foolish enough to call trap, you get Vanity's Emptiness and laugh at them while you have an indestructible Vanity's Emptiness and a 3200 meter. Uh, so that's basically our deck strategy. Uh, our plan B is to just summon Monarchs and do Monarch stuff. So let's just kind of go through the list and talk about some of the choices. Uh, we have three Uranus, because this is basically the goal of the deck. This is kind of like summoning towers. Uh, we have three copies of Erebus. Erebus is great. It's still a, one of the best monarchs you can play. Uh, you know, with Domain in your deck, it's very often one tribute, though our deck is set up to generate double tributes, so not that big of a drawback that it's a two-tribute monster anyway. Uh, being able to dump is very key, so we actually want to summon Erebus early if we're on the monarch game plan. Uh, we have two copies of Karaz. Uh, Karaz is still good, even with Ether at 1, uh, largely because Erebus lets us recur our Singleton Ether, so we still can resolve multiple Karazes on our opponent's turn, uh, as well as just being good to help us dig to combo pieces and kind of bricked up hands. We have our 1 Ether, self-explanatory, 1 Mega Thestalos. Uh, just looking for more powerful Monarchs to summon, uh, this guy came up. Uh, there's no reason to not include a copy of Escalation in your deck at this point, because like if you have already drawn Vanity's Emptiness, your opponent's going to give you traps off Uranus, which is fine. You can either set Prime or Escalation, but I wanted to have a little more value off of Escalation, which is something you get with uh, Karaz, something you get with this guy, or just even summoning this guy, uh, and then playing Domain can win a lot of games in certain matchups. Then I have one copy of Thestalos, the Firestorm Monarch. I wanted one more Monarch. Uh, I'm playing eight of them in the deck. I actually would have liked to play nine um, to get the best value off of my Tenacities, but I couldn't justify playing 12 Tribute Monsters and like 3 Uranus is a slam dunk, so I wasn't going to cut one of those to make room for a ninth Monarch. Uh, it's very possible that a ninth Monarch is better than what we're playing in here, but who knows. Uh, anyways, the Thestalos was literally just, I had, I was kind of set on, you know, these seven Monarchs that I have here, uh, and I wanted one more. I went with the Thestalos because I think that the hand disruption coupled with domain can be very strong, especially if you have hands where you can like play this guy and then Escalation Tribute on your opponent's turn for an Erebus 2 or something like to keep them really off of the cards in their hand. Um, that being said, this could be better off as basically any other Monarch if you feel one would be better. Uh, depending on the meta, maybe a Mobius would be better. Maybe the third Karaz would be better. There's plenty of options, but basically, this is a flex spot that you play a card that you can reveal with tenacity in. I don't care what that card is, play one that you can reveal with tenacity in the slot. Under our tribute fodder, we have three copies of Idea and two copies of Eidos. Uh, Idea is just so much more important than Eidos. Like, drawing this card without this one isn't very good, like if this one's not left in our deck. Uh, so we really want to see this card before this card. It's definitely possible that the third Eidos is better than something that we're playing, but uh, this is how the cards fit the easiest, so that's where we're at on that. Uh, it's also necessary to play three Idea to recur your Monarch Spell and Traps now. Uh, we have three Terror Top and one Taka Tomborg, because this is a one card, two tribute, basically. Um, if you only need one tribute, you can just summon Terror Top and, you know, not worry about going any further, just slow roll the second card. So it's not the end of the world that, like, you have all these extra Terror Tops in your deck, because if you're summoning Monarchs or summoning Uranus, like, your deck is doing what it needed to do. Uh, we have three copies of Tenacity of the Monarchs. Just a very good card. Helps us set up, searches, domain, return, uh, prime, pantheism, whatever we need. <coughs> three return. Without an extra deck, like, this is just the best card in the deck, I think. Uh, every time we summon a Monarch, we get another one, or every time we... Oh, you have to summon a Monarch, you just have to tribute someone. I, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, 
but yeah, so we get to, yeah, you just have to tribute summon. I know that already. <laughs> uh, so we get to search up our monarchs and keep the train going, which is really strong. We're not going to use our extra deck anyway, so we don't care about the drawback. Three copies of domain. Uh, we are a domain deck. No reason to play less than three copies of this card. It also generates a tribute summon if we need it to. So it kind of just does everything you can ask of a card uh, by locking our opponent out, making our monsters bigger in battle, and everything else that it does. We have one copy of March to search up with Uranus. One copy of Stormforth and one copy of Pantheism because they're both limited. <laughs> uh, then we have one from one in Rhoda. These are just extra copies of Idea, basically. Uh, so more cards that generate two tributes so we can tribute some in Uranus turn one. We have one Upstart Goblin. Might as well play 39 cards. Uh, three Prime, one Escalation, and one Vanity's Emptiness. Prime is a card that you might not actually have to play three of anymore. Uh, without as many ways to put it into your graveyard when you draw it, though if you have Erebus in your grave it still works. Uh, a card that's not in here that I would really like to be playing is Foolish Burial, uh, but I couldn't really pick any of the cards to cut. Like, every card I was playing has tested better than Foolish so far. Uh, that being said, Foolish is probably a card that should be in in some kind of later iteration of the deck as I refine it more. Uh, potentially over Prime, I'm not sure if I like that. I want enough cards to discard to Erebus, so I don't know if that's a good solution or not, as well as being able to have an in-play prime, so we can recycle, like, put back in Stormforth, uh, add Tenacity back to hand, plays like that, I don't know. There's a decent amount of depth to the deck when it comes to how you're going to recycle your cards, so I'm not really sure what the best bet there is, um, but that being said, I think those are the traps that we need to play. Uh, you could play some other trap floodgates, I guess, but, like, you know, it's almost always just going to be better to get Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, so if you already drew Vanity's, like, I guess that's another thing. Like, Vanity's doesn't have to be kind of, like, shotgun in this deck. You can actually just hold on to it so you summon Uranus. Uh, so your opponent doesn't know you're you're out of Vanity's, and they're going to give you March. And then you'll have March plus Vanity's, and that seems like... Seems like you just can't lose the game at that point. Um, yeah. Uh, it's worth noting that Uranus also protects uh, Domain which is pretty cool. So this is indestructible as well. And if you have Domain, March, and Uranus, Uranus is 3,500. Your opponent can't use their extra deck. Uranus can't be destroyed. Uh, just an overall really powerful deck. Uh, so I, I don't think that Monarchs are dead necessarily. I don't think that this is the only way you can play Monarchs either. If you wanted to play Domain, you could. Um, I've been testing various versions of extra deck Monarchs with Gofu, and it just hasn't quite got there yet. So... Yeah, I think this is a deck that is actually very good. It's shown a lot of promise in my eyes, uh, and I'm definitely willing to keep testing it more. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. This is a kind of a short video. Uh, I think extra deck monarch videos, or not extra domain monarch videos generally are, because I don't have an extra deck to talk about really, or uh, cards that dig into my extra deck to talk about. I have, you know, cards that generate tribute summons, my tribute summons, and my lock. Uh, that's, that's all the deck is really. Um, if you wanted to get a little bit fancy, you could debatably tech like trade-ins, allures if you wanted to play different uh, different monarch lineup, for instance. Maybe play all level eight monarchs and play trade-in or something rather than play, uh, maybe like keep one Karaz for your Ather, obviously, but you know, play like six level eight monarchs, uh, maybe seven level eight monarchs plus the, the one Karaz, you know, keep Despair, um, obviously. So I don't know, there's some angles you can take with the deck, I'm not really sure what else there is to change in it as of right now. Uh, anything you can do to generate two tributes is good. I'm not sure if this is the best two tribute engine that exists. Uh, in fact, like it's very likely that it's not, but I'm just missing something that would be better to play. Uh, so if you guys can think of something better than Teratoff and Takasa on board, let me know, because I'm not married to these cards in any way, shape, or form. Um, so, yeah. There's a video. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, this deck is still fairly early in the testing stage. I know that uh, actually, Alex Van Zandt played this at YCS Toronto, played a similar deck. Uh, I haven't seen his list or anything, but I assume he played a lot of similar cards to what we're doing in here. Uh, granted, the ban list kind of ripped Monarchs apart, but, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of similar concepts, and if I do get to see the list, there will probably be some cards, where, some cards or concepts we can draw on from his list to make ours better. So, there's the deck, though. Let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, I'm definitely open to suggestions for this, since it is kind of early in the concept phase to me. Uh, and I'd be very happy to talk about it. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.